It's September 17th, 2023, approximately 3.30 Pacific Standard Time. I'm in Northern Arizona, staying at the lodge at the Northern Rim of the Grand Canyon, back in my hiking gear. Woke up early and I did a 10 mile hike in medium terrain, medium to rough terrain out to a very beautiful 360. If I remember, I'll put some of the videos of it in the end here. But <laughs> I didn't I didn't wait around for dinner at the lodge at the main restaurant. But it's really interesting. The restaurants there just serve poison absolute poison I, I'm I just I, I'm driving uh, out of the remote area of the northern tip right now I I had protein shakes and walnuts all day and and water and now I'm driving I'm already 30 minutes out I'm trying to get out of the park because I want to go to a grocery store and get fruit and vegetables and stuff but you go to the deli there and it's all processed meats and chilies, and mac and cheese, hot dogs, pizza, greasy pizza. Uh, they have a saloon that serves alcohol, but then that also serves coffee, but then they just serve pastries. They just serve sugary, fat-filled pastries at that. Uh, the, the gift shop doesn't even have like nuts or doesn't have anything but even even popcorn would have been a healthier option again I didn't check out the lodge restaurant it was closed they were setting it up I didn't see a menu so I don't know what that is I just randomly came here didn't realize there was a lodge got a cabin for two nights to do some hiking I'll do some hiking in the morning so I'm just in this beautiful these grazing plains here for the bison which I haven't seen any which is BS they're like, oh, watch out for the bison, watch out for the elk. They have all these signs, watch out for the caribou. Nothing. It's just fields and fields. Although I did run into some deer this morning. They were, you know, five, ten feet away from me, about eight or, eight or so of them when I was hiking. But I was thinking a little bit about the market this morning. And by the market, I mean the visible hand of the market and how within the system of the government they call anything that doesn't follow their rules is the black market anything that partially follows their rules is the gray market and then implying that staying within their and within their rules is the white market the good market but it's all just a market and even the people that are on the austrian and free market economic side it's all just a it's all just a market. So this illusion of the free market, like this, that they try to call it like a, uh, that the free market is like in the future, if the markets were free, this is what they would look like. That's an illusion as well. That there's no such thing. That is ideal. That's an idealistic way to look at things, a utopian way. The market is right now. There will always be evil manipulators of the market. It'll just, just, it's just how how much evil, how much, you know, ice, uh, collected, collectivized evil will be trying to control the market. And I'm in a national park, so I don't know how much this affects it, and then how much the people affect it, or how much like the government control of healthcare affects it. But like. I'm just watching people, person after person, line up to buy slop, you know, and, and, and out of towners too, like people from like other countries that probably have healthier food options than than America. So they're just lining up to eat pizza, and processed bread, and processed meats with slop on it. And I was thinking, like, maybe somebody's like, well, if we try to, if we offer good food and we offer the bad food. They choose the bad food anyway, so the market's spoken. That's what people want. So they're like, that's capitalism. 
And it's like, I guess, but also there's no natural consequences for getting, being sick and overweight nowadays because even in the 1970s when they tried to adjust insurance rates based on weight. So if you're fat, they tried to raise your rates because it was unhealthy. The government stepped in and said, you can't do that. So it would be really interesting if the government wasn't around to see when the natural consequences came into play, what people would eat or be incentivized to eat, or maybe their insurance company would even incentivize them to eat, to be healthier, to lower their rates, to feel healthier, to feel better, to have more longevity. But none of that matters when you're in love with yourself, when you have self-love, when you have philia, philia which is self-love uh, in the Greek, one of the nine. Uh, I'll go over the, the nine types of Greek love in the future. But when you have the, the, the core love that you need, which is self-love first before you can love outward, I'm going to drive probably an hour out and an hour back so that I don't have to eat poison. Uh, and it was a really good lesson in like, you know, you're kind of controlled in that environment. I wouldn't say it's a jail because they can leave, right? They're not there against their will. But it's isolated to the point where I didn't see any healthy options. So they're within an imaginary cage to the point where the ease of going out. Now, maybe some of the people were smarter than myself. I didn't plan ahead. I drove here in the dead of night. I didn't see all this beautiful scenery. It's pitch black. I was just following lines on the road into the middle of the nowhere hoping that I could get a room for the night where I would camp in my car. So maybe a lot of other people brought coolers of healthy food and fruit and stuff from the outside world. I'm heading into the grocer now. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to do some shopping and see if I can find a healthy place. There's no, um, there's no cell data or anything. And I couldn't find anything in my sat nav uh, to direct me. So I'm just, I'm using the old fashioned way. I know where the sun is. I'm, I'm headed northwest, well, north, northwest right now, out away from the point, back to civilization. So I'm just using the sun to get myself out, and then I'm gonna either ask people or go about trying to find some healthy food. But back to self-love. It's it's not even a it's when you get to a point where you just make the decision of who you are. When I quit smoking, I smoked for 10 years. I smoked until 2010. And I quit, so it'll be where it was 13 years on June 7th of this year, 2023. So I've quit longer than I smoked. And I tried to quit a lot and I was gaining weight and I was going through all this stuff and I couldn't really figure out what's going on and I, I just journaled back to when I started smoking and I remember that I was living I was smoking cigars and I was living in this other area and then I switched one of my friends is like you should smoke cigarettes they're filtered instead of cigars you're smoking like three a day so then I was like oh I made the switch from cigars to cigarettes so then I tracked back when I started smoking cigars and it was like uh, at parties when everybody drank and I didn't drink I wanted something to do but then I was like well why was I hanging out with people that I had nothing in common with and I was like oh I was trying to get out of my house so basically I, I tracked it all the way back to where the person in my life convinced me that I didn't love myself and then I had a uh, a forgiveness like talk and I just kind of came to grips with it and then as soon as I kind of grips with it I'm like I don't want to be that person anymore I quit smoking cold turkey and started a life of self-improvement and I've been making little steps I'm not perfect I still slip I have a sweet tooth 
So I try to stay off cane sugars and processed sugars. I don't do corn. I haven't done corn syrup um, that I know of. Corn syrup, unless somebody put it in something by accident in over a decade. I've done very little soy. The soy that I do get is um, the, the same thing. Sometimes when I'm out and I'm trying to eat something, I, I just can't get away from the soy oil. But I don't do seed oils. I haven't done them in, in some time. But it's not even an option for me right now. I'm just driving out in the middle of nowhere, literally driving an hour. And it's like, to me, like, you're driving two, why are you driving two hours? Just eat something that they had there. Eat the salad or whatever. I guess I could have continued to have walnuts in a thing, but it's not an option. When you care about yourself, it's a standard. This is a standard of living that I refuse to eat their poisons. And if more of us took a stand, standard, had standards, set up boundaries within the system, other parts of the market would open up. And like I said, there's no utopian free market in the future. The, the, the utopia of that market is here. You just need to focus on it. So, so for me, those aren't food options. That's drug dealers. I don't do drugs like that. So that's not part of my market. All right, I'm driving two hours to my market. It's a smaller market, but it's okay because I'm I'm a weirdo. I have a small clique of people that like me. Not everybody likes me. I don't like certain people. That's just what it is. Vince Vaughn swings, and so for me, my market is is this way. I don't know exactly where it is, to be honest with you. I might have to drive an hour and a half both ways to come back. I'm kind of putting my faith in God right now, or whatever you want to call it. But I just, I, I have a feeling in my gut that I'm going to find some healthy options to eat on my journey this way, because, uh, because that's the standard. I'm not going to stop looking for healthy food until I find it. And that's what I'm gonna eat. <laughs> and I'm gonna buy a bunch of it and I'm gonna reward the person that gives it to me. Um, this is really beautiful country out here, but it looks like they had some fires or something a little while ago. Uh, definitely the part where I was hiking had fire. So, so ask yourself, here's some philosophy for you. If you're having problems, I still have some weight issues. I'm still trying to lose another 20 pounds or so in exercise. So I still got some obstacles with myself. So no one's perfect. I'm doing the best that I can in self-esteem, confidence, and all that stuff is a resource that you have to farm and get and work on daily. And when you get tired, when you're not sleeping right, when you're not eating right, you get, you know, jinx in your armor and you have to prepare for the battle of the negativity around you and be strong when you go out into the world so that you don't give in to these negative temptations. So if, if you're in a situation when where you feel overwhelmed, but you don't like what you become, and you want to take charge. You might have to go on a journey through your childhood, do some journaling, writing, maybe go to a therapist, talk about it, and figure out where your hatred for yourself began and then how you can get back to loving yourself actively. Love is an action. It's not it's not a, it's not a noun. You have to when you love people, when you love your neighbor, when you love yourself, it's an action word. It's actions that you take for love. And if you keep repeating them on a day-to-day -day basis, you become your actions and you become love. So, if you're overweight, if you're tired, if you're unhealthy, you don't know where to start, you got a couple of options. One is a lot of us are trying to push the shadow instead of the statue. 
So if you're overweight and you have a bad, an unhealthy relationship with food, which I do, I had to go back and figure out where that unhealthy relationship came from. And food to me growing up was um, comfort, not fuel. And it was the one thing in my family that wasn't a negative at get-togethers and stuff in my Greek family. So I'm a good cook. I can cook delicious, tasty stuff, and I can overeat that that stuff and I like the flavors and stuff so I'm getting satisfaction and happiness and dopamine rushes from preparing the food preparing it for others and eating the food and which seems pretty healthy but when when you're truly being yourself and you're in love and you're surrounded by people that love you you're enough you don't have I don't have to be me plus the food or me plus being vegan and hanging out with vegans or I don't have to say let's get something to eat it doesn't have to be me plus a meal in order for somebody to want to hang out with me and these are some things I'm still working on but so the the statue is is me gathering love from the action from these actions and that's what I have to work on the weight part of it will take care of itself once I can I, I continue to go down the path of correcting myself and staying on the path and not thinning so I have a goal to eat healthy and once in a while I slip up where I overeat and I sin that's okay I repent and I get back on course and eventually the memories and the, the parts of my brain that are, are that are attached to food will be attached to it in a different way. It's just going to take time for the old path and neural waves in my brain to to get overgrown and the new ones to go. So that was twenty, you know, from from when I was eight, right? So let's say so from eight to eighteen is ten, from to twenty eight to you know probably about before thirty eight, but almost thirty years of that path being grooved into my brain and now I'm turning the ship around and it's only been you know a decade so I, that path is still regrowing and I'm still digging in the new path of a healthy healthy direction and it takes time so it didn't take me a day to create those negative habits and it's not going to take me a day to break those negative habits so I have to ooh, Finally some bison, or no, wild cows. Cool, 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 cool. Man, that's that's pretty cool. Um, where was I? I love animals. I love seeing animals in their natural habitat. So for you, whatever your problem is, there's a couple of things. One, check, shed your egalitarianism and check your genetics and see if you have um, a genetic lineage that makes you, I guess it's predisposed to certain things like alcoholism or sugar addiction uh, or, or what, whatever it is, drug, drug addiction. And then if you're having problems, the easiest way to start is not to surround yourself. So one thing that I do is I like sweets, so I did figure out some ways to have healthy sweets. So I make like a breakfast pudding with chia seeds and cacao and dates as a sweetener. Um, and that has helped me a lot because I get my sweet tooth out of the way. But it's not super unhealthy because it's four to eight dates used as a sweetener with the fiber and everything. And it's fructose instead of sucrose. Um, but when I... When I'm at the grocery store and I'm shopping and I go to buy like vegan ice cream or something, I just take a deep breath and I'm like, I just ask myself, are you the type of guy that buys ice cream and then eats, you know, because if I eat, bring a pint of ice cream in my house, I'm, 
I just want to eat the whole thing in a sitting. <laughs> so I so I have to stop it when I'm in the store. And when I go over to the ice cream thing, I say, you the type of guy that eats a, a cold, chemical-filled ice cream? Because you can go make that chia stuff, put it in the fridge, and then whip it up, and it's going to taste just as good. It's going to taste... It's going to be healthier and it's going to be better for you. So I just ask myself if you're that type of person. And sometimes I lose the battle. Um, the stuff that I'm eating is still pretty healthy. It's got cane sugar and cacao and coconut or coconut milk and almond milk and stuff. It doesn't have a bunch of preservatives in it. But I'd still like to get away from it. So look at your life like that. So make a note. And if you're depressed or you have anxiety, a lot of times that's because your dreams of who you could be and the reality of who you are don't match up. But also, you're not trying to close the gap. So if you're on this path and you're on this path and you're getting further and further away from who you want to be, you got to at least go like this so they converge in the future. And you'll get, you'll get a self-purpose where you'll start feeling better. And you start setting some standards for yourself and you can start writing them down. I mean, I when I meet other people that are vegans or I eat idols or Jainism, whatever it is, people that have extremely restrictive diets within this cage, I like to just talk to them a little bit and ask them how they started and how it's going and everything because it shows, at least for the most part, that person can be res regimented. They can choose to do something. And when they choose it, man, I can't believe how far I'm <laughs> And then when they choose it, I, I definitely thought it was close, that the, the intersection was close to this. And then when they choose it, they stick to it. So that's a, that's a type of personal character that you can build by deferring your gratification on more, more vice. Among cows out in the open. I gotta get some video of this from my from my buddy. She loved this. Um, so it, it, it's a deferred gratification. So yours might be something else. So if you try to quit smoking, you can't because you keep wanting a cigarette. You you might want to track why you're smoking. Sorry, if I have tried. Um, mucus in my nose from hiking out in the woods all day you're just going to have to deal with it I didn't shower, I got immediately got on the road when I get back because I want a nice healthy meal to re-energize myself but you'll have to figure out whatever it is for you and make a list and then make a plan and it can be small and it can be super small steps you don't necessarily have to go uh, vegan, but I, I would, but I will tell you a story here. So, with the statistics of veganism, if when they do a test on diets every year, they try to figure out the healthiest. The Mediterranean diet usually comes out as I eat Mediterranean most of my life. I'm Greek, um, and then when I switch to veganism, I kind of eat a Mediterranean vegan diet. Um, and the reason the Mediterranean diet comes on top is because it's not necessarily the healthiest diet for you, although it is mostly whole foods and good healthy fats. It's that people stick to it. So the reason veganism falls is because it's an extremely difficult diet to stick to and you have to supplement and you have to track your blood and you have to do all these extra things because you're not supplementing meat and fish and eggs so it becomes less healthy from that perspective because it's difficult to do but on the other side is there a grocery store in here there's a gas station but is there a grocery store that's the question. A visitor, a visitor center. A gross fried bread. Yeah, thanks. More slop. Yeah, let me have some fried bread. Can you put some sugar on that, please? <laughs> Actually, I did eat some fried bread that I got from a Mexican lady earlier, but it was literally just uh, 
it was literally just bread and baking bread and baking soda I traded her some uh, some tomatoes for it but anyways I, I digress where, where was I I was talking about fixing yourself so the vegan diet right but then they track vegans and they're like well why are vegans if the vegan diet so not so healthy why are vegans so healthy even when they don't eat a very good vegan diet and it's usually because people once they go on a journey of self-improvement like they quit smoking they exercise they run they change the stuff like the chemicals and the you know the deodorants and the sprays and the stuff that they do veganism is a, another layer to the health they're already doing so they're not usually a person that chooses veganism for health is usually not smoke nowadays it's different because there's a lot a lot of emotional vegans um, but it, but when they were doing these studies back in the day it's because it, it was a long chain of stuff so they quit smoking they go to the doctors regularly they exercise they watch what they eat they go to bed on time they stretch they do yoga then they become vegan so it was it was it was giving off a false um, healthiness to the diet because the people that chose the diet were healthy but when you just go to strict diet and you can isolate for individuals so now they have what's called plant-based which is not veganism veganism is also when you you know you're not using leather and glues from animals and and, and, and killing to like make stuff on top of that it's a whole whole way of life not just the eating habit so the point being when you start your journey don't try to go from uh, you know precious to Angelina Jolie or Brad Pitt or whatever the modern day hot woman is uh, Jenna Ortiz what, what are the what are your kids what are your kids watching these days whatever the hot, hot lady is in the and the the, the not hot lady don't try to just go from one to other that's not healthy that's a that's a, a path of vanity um, you don't want to be so humble that you don't work out but you don't want your you want the, the your looks to be the byproduct of a healthy lifestyle that emulate what healthy looks like you don't want to just be good looking because you can get there unhealthy you can use drugs and performance enhancing drugs and starve yourself to get thin but it doesn't mean that you're or jacked it doesn't mean that you're healthy it means that you look a particular way so as you start your journey be realistic on yourself see how long it took you to get there see how long the problems that you have have been there so for example with women they did some case studies that a lot of women gain their weight after some uh, sexual abuse because they want to hide and they feel like if they have a sexy body they'll get raped again that is something that is going to require a lot of therapy and digging and understanding that it wasn't your fault and it wasn't about looks it was a power struggle from an evil person that did that to you uh, I don't know they don't do studies on men and boys because they don't care but I'm sure it could be similar to boys that were in a similar situation that gained some weight it could be some some sort of sexual or physical abuse and then once you get that give yourself a realistic path if you've been overweight for 20 years and you turn that ship around and start making better choices uh, if it doesn't happen in a year don't beat yourself up it took you 20 years you had it in one direction and now you turned around so it's going to take time but you can you can uh, have it stack, which is a way to make it go quicker. Sorry, I'm still on the lookout for for elk and, and cattle and bison and all the good things. Why I talk here, but you can have it stack. So if you've been sleeping bad and eating bad and um, and having bad habits and you know, going out late and 
keeping your phone, you can start ha stacking all good habits on one another, which will make it quicker. Because a lot of times your bad habits didn't happen all at once. You stack, they happen over a long time. When you reverse the ship, you can try to create a bunch of good habits, which will turn the ship around a lot quicker for you. But the key is to work backwards and find that, that true self-love. And it's got to be love, not niceness. It's not self-niceness. It's self-kindness. So when you're nice to yourself, you tell yourself what you want to hear. Just like when you're nice to a person, you tell them what you think they want to hear to feel good. If you're kindness, uh, kind to yourself and kind to others, you tell them or you tell yourself what you need to hear in order to be better. So like, if you're overweight and you feel sickly and you're not meeting people and you're getting diseases and you're tired and you're in bed all the time and your joints hurt and you say, well, it's okay, you are beautiful just the way you are and you had a tough life. Okay, yes, that's a nice thing to say. And you don't want to beat yourself up either and be like, you're a fat fuck, get out of bed, you tub of lard. You just want to be kind to yourself and say, and, you know, I mean, that's me talking to myself in the mirror when I work out. <laughs> to call myself slurs and tell me to work hard and I'm a lazy old man as I hit my advanced lifts that <laughs> only power lifters can, on the planet can lift and no one else can and calling myself weak and need to work on it. So I have some negative self-talk. But with a kind talk, you just say, all right, you got to the bottom with it. You had a bad roll of the dice. Some bad things happened. You're working on that. You're working on eating better. And you're working on exercising. So let's go. We're on the new path today. And I have fat that I need to get rid of. I'm not fat. You know, and I know this is cringy because people on the left kind of use this language, but that's really what it is. You have to tell yourself you can't. When they identify, when people get you to identify as fat in this body positive movement, they're really tricking you into staying unhealthy and negative and sabotaging your life because you you aren't fat. You have excess fat. It's stored calories because you've been overeating and you've been using extra resources and you've been using food as comfort or um, or, or, or reward or whatever it's been and you have an unhealthy relationship and you have to figure out how you can leave that abusive relationship and make it healthy. And it's one of the tough ones because with alcohol you can just quit and never look back. Um, with smoking you can just quit and never look back. You need to eat. You, you need to exercise. So when you have an abusive relationship with food, whether it's starving yourself or eating too much, it's difficult because, and you might need help. You probably are gonna need help from somebody beyond yourself because you're gonna need to continue to eat. You just have to uh, work on the relationships with yourself in food so that it's healthy. And the same thing with exercise. You can over-exercise and you can under-exercise. And when you under-exercise, you start getting, you know, feeling bad. So you gotta get, that's an abusive relationship with you and exercise. But you can just go to the other side and just work out too much, go up, up and beyond, make yourself sick, tired, fatigued. You don't wanna work out anymore. You bad soreness, hurting your joints and stuff. That's also an abusive relationship that you need to leave with exercise. So you gotta find the happy medium, and that'll change. As you exercise more, you can push yourself more. As you eat better, you can, and you exercise more and you have more muscle mass, you'll be able to um, eat more and enjoy that healthy relationship you have with food more. So I think that's all I need to that's all that's all I gotta say about that. <laughs> this is just beautiful. I'm just overlooking the mountains and the, the canyon here. As I continue to drive, I will find healthy food. I don't care. I mean, it's four o'clock now. I'm not sure. I started this video at 34. So I'm 34 minutes into driving and I've been driving for 10 minutes before I started this video. 
So I'm not quite at an hour yet, but because the speed limit is, is restrictive uh, due to safety, there's no cops out here, but it's just windy and there's, you can, there's a ravine below on both sides. You can go into the canyon. So since I don't want to Thelma and Louise myself, I'm gonna to have to take it easy as I go go on my journey here. But think about this. Let me be an example for you. The next time you're gonna do a negative something negative, and the the, the positive thing is tough. Remember good old Dave Wright and his beard in the middle of nowhere with no nav system and no cell data, driving on faith, 40 minutes away from where all his belongings are in a cabin with just raw faith and gut feeling that I'm going to find some healthy food at the end of this road when I get out of here. And if I can do that, if I can make this journey, then you can make an easier journey to whatever whatever the whatever you're looking to, to do when the, the, when the good road is a little bit harder than the negative road. So, all right, that's enough. Take care.